hope the mic is working. Yeah, cool. So welcome all of you. I'm glad to be here today. Um, I think thanks. Um, you, I think he's already given the introduction. So I think let's jump directly um, into the today's topic. So today I'm here. I've flown all the way from Mumbai to meet you guys over here. And today I'll go, I'm going to be talking about the Cora Ethereum bridge. So remember those days um, back in 2015 when Ethereum went live? It was truly very fascinating, right? The very idea of you being able to deploy decentralized applications to this common decentralized network where there are no barriers, there are no intermediaries, where let's say anyone can come today and it opens you up to this completely new world where you can trade with anyone, where you can interact with anyone, where you can transact with anyone today without any barriers, without any intermediary. And this very idea was actually very fascinating. And I would say that this was not just a vision, but this was something which the Ethereum community, the Ethereum public community actually delivered, right? But if you look at, um, of course, Ethereum is great, it has these amazing features, but with its powerful features, with its powerful security, there are some problems which all of us are trying to solve today. What about the high gas fees? What about the slow throughput today? What about the scalability problems, right? And with the, with the um, ever-growing growth of DeFi today in the Ethereum world, it's going to add to these problems again. And um, because of this immense growth of DeFi, major players from, in fact, from the banks, for, from corporates, from the FMIs, they are trying to solve and they're trying to perform certain experiments and they're trying to see if we can possibly solve these problems. Is there possibly a way where I can still use these, this underlying Ethereum technology, this underlying Ethereum network? Is there possibly a way, way where I could still use the powerful security which Ethereum provides, but at the same time, is it possible to get away with the gas cost? Is it possible to get away with the slow throughput? Is it possible to get away with the scalability problems? So. Here at R3, um, we've built this bridge called as the Cora Ethereum bridge. Hi, can you please play the video? Yeah, so as you can see, Alice has 50K worth of gold ERC20 tokens on the Ethereum account. What if I tell you, can you please pause? What if I tell you today, if, is it possible for us to let's say use this bridge and let's say move these ERC20 tokens from Ethereum network to let's say some other network like for example Corda. Yeah, can you please? And yeah, and I, I would say yes, we can very well do that. And I just did it using the bridge. And now we have moved and we have issued wrapped ERC20 tokens on the Corda side. Once the tokens are available on the Corda side, you can easily trade them, you can easily perform any computation on them on the Corda network. You can very well transfer the tokens from one party to the other party, and we just did it right now on the Corda network with zero gas fees. And this is going to dramatically increase your um, throughput of your Ethereum application. It will eventually increase the scalability of your application as well. Now, from 2015, we have seen a lot of major players in the enterprise space, and they've been trying to use, um, uh, they've been trying to, uh, what they've been trying to do is, they've been possibly trying to modify the versions of Ethereum and Bitcoin, and they've been trying to solve some of the hardest problems in finance technology today. So, with my experience, what I've seen is, most of these enterprise clients or these enterprise companies, they start off on the public domain, on the public blockchains, 
And eventually when they get to production, they realize that they require certain capabilities which are quite native to Coda's architecture. Like, for example, scalability, privacy, ease of use, or ease of integration with exist existing legacy systems. Now, my colleague will, will talk about Coda in much detail in the next presentation. So, as of now, I would say, if you look into the blockchain space, if you look at the overall blockchain market as of now, I would say the overall blockchain market is divided into two parts. I see that there is this this one world where there is immense rise, there's enormous rise of, of cryptocurrency. I would like to call it the cryptocurrency world. And then there's this other world, which is the, um, I would say that's the enterprise world where enterprise companies are trying to use blockchain to solve some of their problems. And people like R3, where I work, we've, we've created Corda, which is the open source blockchain platform, which completely focuses on um, deploying these kind of applications and it focuses on applying the idea of what you see is what I see to business applications. So I always keep on asking my, uh, myself this question, are we actually in a race? Is there actually a race amongst or between public and private blockchain? What, what do you guys think? So let's come back to this question in a bit. So we've seen that there's an enormous increase in the amount of stablecoin, the amount of stable coins in circulation in the market is there's, there's a very, um, so the amount of stable coins in the market is increasing every day. Now these stable coins, most of them I would say are ERC20 compatible and most of them can be handled on Ethereum. If you look at this particular graph, this, block, this graph has been taken from the block and it shows you the, um, the increase in stable coins over the period of years. If you look at 2021, this will show you that the amount of stable coins or the supply of stable coins has drastically increased in 2021. Now, there has been a huge push from the corporates, from the FMIs, from the banks, and they want, they, they, they basically, they want to have such an offering, they want to have such a platform where they can use the stable coins, uh, where they can use this particular offering, this particular platform, to let's say issue their own coins, to issue their own stable coins. Now there also has been heavy engagement on the CBDC side and the C in general the CBDCs and stable coins, I would say it's, um, it's driving heavy engagements across banks, uh, financial institutions and the corporates. Now talking about CBDC, there's a lot of work again going on on the CBDC aspect um, at R3 on the Corda side. Um, we have Project Helvetia, which is, uh, which is being conducted by BIS, Swiss National Bank, and they're trying to see if CBDC, um, um, so, so what, what they've done is they've used Corda to demonstrate that the tokenized assets can be settled in wholesale CBDC. We also have Project Dunbar, where, um, where National Bank of South Africa, National Bank of um, Australia, um, along with Monetary Authority of Singapore, they're experimenting, um, they're, they're, they're experimenting if it's possible to use wholesale C CBDC for international settlements. Then we have Project Jura, where BIS, SIX, Accenture, Credit Suisse, and many more banks, they're experimenting and this, they, they want to see if wholesale CBDC, um, and basically they want to see how wholesale CBDC can be used to enhance the speed, the efficiency, the transparency when it comes to cross-border settlements. Now, we've seen an enormous growth of public blockchains, we've seen an enormous growth with DeFi and NFTs, we've seen, seen an enormous growth of use cases in the, blockchain, in the public blockchain space, but I would say at the same time, uh, because of uh, the push from the banks for CBDCs, the um, amount of growth on, from the stable coins perspective, there has always also been a huge push and there has been a drastically increase in, uh, in the number of use cases on the permission space Size, uh, side of the blockchain as well. For example, if you see Contour, which is um, in, already in live in production in, um, in the international trade and it's really doing great. So, I, and so, so basically looking at the overall market condition, I think that it's really not about the race between the public and private blockchain. If you look at the needs of the people in the public and private blockchain, I think it's 
it's it's about understanding it's about respecting and it's about um uh, basically respecting the needs of the people in the public and private blockchain and it's about acknowledging um these guys and it's about acknowledging each other and the type of problems which each blockchain space is trying to solve now to realize the business needs which i spoke about in the earlier earlier slides i think we must connect ethereum to other heterogeneous blockchain networks out there i think we must connect um the public blockchain systems to the private blockchain systems and i think we must execute transactions simultaneously on both the chains at the same time to get the best out of both the worlds now talking about um talking about um connecting ethereum to this heterogeneous worlds to this heterogeneous networks and talking about connecting all the heterogeneous networks together and that's where the bridge kicks in so a bridge i would say it's a tool which lets you connect multiple blockchain systems it lets you connect different networks and it lets you port assets from one blockchain system to the other blockchain system solving one of the major pain points in today's blockchain space which is the lack of interoperability now a bridge basically lets you port asset from one blockchain to another and what happens is usually traditional layer one blockchain solutions they are kind of siloed and the native tokens uh, which are issued on these blockchain systems these are kind of as well you know these are kind of these are the uh, tokens which are locked on these layer one systems and they they because of some reason they can't be used in used in other chains now this presents a problem to the crypto users where probably they might have certain assets which require certain functionality which are not provided by some um some this some of these layer one solutions and because of this the kind of these assets get locked into one chain bridges provide a solution to solve this problem now there are a lot of advantages when it comes to bridges porting assets from one blockchain to another solves a lot of problems like let's say you can use a bridge to port assets from let's say ethereum and you can port these assets into some other blockchain for example corda once they are on corda you can trade them you can do any sort of processing you want on them again with no gas fees with increase in your throughput with um which which eventually the scales or application to a large extent so something like basically the idea is can i possibly take let's say some of my transaction processing of the main chain and move it out into a another chain probably representing as a layer 2 chain can we do that so yes we can do that with bridges and that's the advantages which it provides now coming to the work which which we've been doing here at r3 we've built a bridge called as the corda ethereum bridge now this lets you port assets from ethereum to corda and the other way around as well so um so let me quickly talk about this bridge um now so this corda ethereum bridge what are we going to do is i'm going to show you guys a demo today and what are we going to do we are going to take some erc20 tokens from the ethereum network and we are going to move them to the corda network so the idea is to take the tokens from the ethereum network issue them as wrapped erc20 tokens equivalent amount of wrapped erc20 tokens on the corda side once the tokens are available on the corda side i can easily trade them i can perform any any kind of computation i want on them once on the corda side again with zero gas fees and then once probably i'm done with my processing i can very well move the tokens or probably as we say we can actually redeem these tokens back to the original um, erc20 tokens on the ethereum side right so uh, we are going to play the uh, video too now but uh, before we play the video let me give you an idea about what we are going to do as of now yeah uh, if you could pause it a bit so that's the corda ethereum bridge uh, yeah if you could pause it a bit for a moment yeah so we have built this demo and as of now what we are going to do is i have deployed three parties 
Alice, Bob, and the bridge. I've deployed Alice, Bob, and bridge on the Ethereum side. I also have Alice, Bob, and bridge as Ethereum accounts deployed on the Ethereum side. I have Alice, Bob, and bridge deployed as Corda nodes on the Corda side. In addition to this, I have also deployed a smart contract, which is the bridge smart contract, which is going to act as a payment channel for today, for this demo. Now, there are these two scripts which I, I'm using as of now, and these two scripts help me deploy. So basically, the top script, it lets you deploy the Ethereum application. Uh, it, I'm, I'm using Hardat to set up a local Ethereum uh, um, environment, and I'm using that script to set up a local Ethereum network on my system. I'm using the below script to, um, to deploy a local Coda network as well. So using these scripts, you will have the um, Alice, Bob, and Bridge deployed onto Ethereum, onto Coda as well. The script will also be, take care of deploying the Bridge Smart contract on the Ethereum network. Apart from this, the script will all take care of initializing and deploying some test ERC20 tokens. So uh, for this demo, I have used gold, silver tokens. And so what we are going to do is we are going to uh, initialize each account with 50k worth of gold and silver tokens. So Alice, Bob, and Bridge will have 50k worth of ERC20 tokens um, on the Ethereum side. Okay, so that's the overall um, uh, the setup which you require for the bridge. Now once um, now now what I'm going to do for this demo is I'm going to show you how one party can transfer ERC20 tokens. So let's say Alice. So how Alice can transfer ERC20 tokens from the Ethereum network to the Corda network, issue them as wrapped ERC20 tokens on the Corda network, and we will see that once the tokens are issued as wrapped ERC20 tokens on the Corda side, we will see how easily you can trade them. For this demo, I'm going to show you how easily you can transfer the tokens, these wrapped ERC20 tokens on the Corda side, and I'm going to show you how you can transfer these tokens from one party to the other party with zero gas fees. And once the tokens are transferred, we will see that, so Alice is going to transfer the tokens, uh, these issued wrapped tokens to Bob on the uh, Corda side. Once the tokens are wrapped and issued and moved, we will see how Bob will redeem these tokens back to equivalent amount of ERC20 tokens on the Ethereum side. So yeah, um, if we play the video, as of now, we can see that these are the test ERC tokens which I've already deployed. I am just whitelisting these tokens. Um, if you look at the bridge node, we have if you go at Alice's node, we have 50k worth of gold and silver ERC20 tokens. So all the parties have 50k worth of ERC20 tokens. Now, what Alice is doing is, Alice is going to issue and move wrapped ERC20 tokens on the, um, from Ethereum to Corda. Now, at this point of time, what has happened? When Alice clicked on wrap, what are we doing at the back end? Now, let's try to understand that. So for this particular bridge, we've used something called as the hash time lock contract. So what does exactly a hash time lock contract mean? So a hash time lock contract, basically it, it combines hash lock and time lock. So let's try to understand what exactly, what exactly you mean by a hash lock. So let's say that we have a sender, we have a receiver, and we have some funds which belong to the sender. So the sender wants to be able to send these funds to the receiver after certain condition is being completed. So let's assume that the sender wants to be able to send these funds to the receiver only after, let's say, he gets his coffee. So what do we do with hash lock? So what the sender does is, the sender takes these funds, it logs these funds based of a secret known only to the sender, and so basically the sender transfers these funds to the receiver, but these funds at this point of time, they are locked. They are locked based off a secret which is known only to the sender. And the receiver will be able to claim these funds. He will be able to use these funds only if he knows the secret. And the sender will reveal the secret to this receiver only if that particular condition is met, probably only after he receives his coffee. So that's how the hash lock works. And if you look at time lock, it's something similar, but the idea is that the sender will lock the funds only for X amount of time, and the receiver can claim the funds only within this specific time. Now, when I say hash time lock, it basically combines both of this. So what hash time lock says is, it says that the sender 
um, uh, transfers the funds to the receiver, but these are locked based off a secret known only to the sender. And the receiver can claim these funds only within this X amount of time. So that's the idea. So for this bridge, we have deployed a hash time lock contract on both the sides. We have deployed this hash time lock contract on the Coda side as well as on the Ethereum side as well. So at this point of time, if you see, Alice has issued a request where he says that, can, I, can you move my tokens from Ethereum to Corda? At this point of time, behind the scene, what happens is the bridge issues equivalent amount of wrapped ERC20 tokens to Alice on Corda. And it uses the same idea which I explained right now. It uses the hash time lock idea. And the tokens are issued in the form of wrapped ERC20 tokens to Alice on Corda, but at the same time, these tokens are locked, again, based off a secret known only to the bridge node. Now, the bridge node, now Alice on Corda side will be able to claim these tokens, will be able to use these tokens only if it knows the secret. Now, the bridge will tell, will be in a position to tell the secret to Alice on Corda only if it actually receives an equivalent amount of actual ERC20 tokens. And that's where what we are going to do now, Alice on the Ethereum side will pay equivalent amount of ERC20 tokens. And at that point of time, if you hold on, at this point of time, the actual amount of ERC20 tokens have been moved from the Alice's account to the Bridge Smart contract. Again, when, where they are locked based off a secret known only to the bridge node. Now, at this point of time, what do we have? We have the bridge who has issued, already issued, some wrapped ERC20 tokens to Alice on Corda. And we also have the equivalent amount of funds which have been transferred from Alice, and these are also locked in the bridge smart contract. So now uh, we are in a good position, and the bridge simply with, withdraws these tokens, and the tokens are moved from um, the tokens are moved, as you can see, the tokens are moved from the Brit Smart contract into its own account. And at this point of time, um, the wrapped ERC20 tokens are unlocked, and the bridge shares the secret with the Alice on Corda side. And the, if you play the video, now Alice on Corda side will be now be able to unlock the funds and use them. Now. As you see, the quarter balance is 1,000. Now let's see that once the tokens are there on the quarter side, we will simply transfer the tokens from Alice's account to Bob account with zero gas fees. Now, now, yeah, if you hold on. Yeah, so now let's see that since the tokens have already moved to the, yeah, these wrapped ERC20 tokens are now moved from Alice to Bob on the quarter side. Similarly, similar to this, you can perform any computation whatsoever using the wrapped ERC20 tokens on the Corda side. Again, with zero gas fees and increase, which drastically increases the um, scalability of your application. Now, let's, let's look at the last step, which is the redeem step. Now, Bob can now redeem the tokens, and um, he can get equivalent amount of ERC20 tokens back on the Ethereum side. So if, I, if Bob clicks on the redeem, what happens behind the scenes is, again, um, what happens is Bob internally transfers these tokens to the bridge. But again, these tokens are wrapped. These tokens are locked based off a secret known only to the Bob node. Okay. Now, once bridge receives these locked wrapped tokens onto its side, he will now transfer the equivalent amount of ERC20 tokens which it has in its custody to the Brit Smart contract, where again, these will be locked based off a secret known only to the Bob node. So at this point of time, what has happened? Bob has transferred the wrapped ERC20 tokens to the bridge, but these are locked based off a secret only known to the Bob. The bridge has also transferred equivalent amount of ERC20 tokens from its account to the Brit Smart contract, Again, they are locked based on the secret known only to the Bob. So Bob can now simply go ahead and withdraw the funds from the Brit Smart contract into its own account based off a secret which is known only to the Bob. So that's what we just did. So if you go to 
the Bob's account, Bob can simply withdraw the tokens and the, there you go. So that's really it about this, this, um, this demo. So we saw how Corda Ethereum bridge can be used to transfer assets from Ethereum to Corda, perform some processing in Corda with zero gas fees, and then you can easily redeem these tokens back into equivalent amount of ERC-20 tokens on the Ethereum side. So um, thank you very much. I think that's the end of my session. If you have any questions, I would suggest I will be there throughout in, at the booth full day. So feel free to come and talk to me. Uh, and, and to be frank enough, this is just the beginning of, so we are just building this bridge. So I'll, I'll be really interested to understand your requirements, your needs, probably if you have something where we can work together. So do reach out to me because the upcoming roadmap will be completely based on your feedback. So yeah, thank you for having me up. Thank you.